Sclerotinia white mold is a terrible disease. It's one of the worst ones we've had on our farm here the last couple of years too. It can affect soybeans and a number of other crops. So today we're gonna talk a little about this disease, why it's so bad, and what you can do to fix it on your farm. First of all, let me dispel any myth about, well, it's Liberty Link beans that are the worst on white mold, or it's Extend beans that are the worst, or it's conventional beans. That's all nonsense. There's elite germplasm going into all of these trait platforms. There's no trait platform across the board that's better on this disease than any other. Now, I'll say this too, there are no resistant varieties out there. There are some that are more tolerant, and when we look at the tolerance level of certain soybean varieties, it doesn't matter what the trait package is, doesn't matter what the maturity package is, as far as is it a late maturing bean or an early one. What really matters is the plant structure and how that plant really stands up all through the season. If we have good standability, and here's one other characteristic you may not have thought of, leaf size. If you've got smaller leaves, especially on the upper nodes, that allows for more sunlight to move down through the canopy. When we have those conditions with a good standing bean, smaller leaves up top, we end up with more sunlight down low and less white mold pressure. All right, let's talk about exactly why. Well, sclerotinia white mold can survive in soil not super long, but uh, many people will say around five years or so. And what happens is you'll end up with mushrooms that are coming out above ground they shoot spores out. Those typically will go in through, like in soybeans, I'll just give you the example, when we have flowers in soybeans, the flowers will dry up pretty quickly, and then it's in those spots that usually the infection goes in. So you don't typically see white mold before you're gonna see any flowers. The white mold's gonna come a little bit later in the season in almost all crops. But the reason why this disease is so bad is because it can be a real hard infection. You don't notice it super early. A lot of people say, well, I'm done, it's late in the season, and then that thing just takes off. So with this disease, it is a stem rot, sclerotinia stem rot. It's a fungal disease, so there are fungicides that have activity on it, but the problem is you've got to spray really good elite fungicides early in the season, and those are expensive. Well, you also have to get great coverage, and here's one other thing, Brian. When you talk about soybeans flowering, now the soybeans are bigger, and in a lot of cases, they've got a canopy. And if you've planted at a very thick population or they're a very bushy type soybean or they have a lot of lodging or lazy branches, it's tough to get that coverage down through there and you've got a prime environment for fungal development where it's going to be considerably cooler than it would out in the sun and you've got restricted air movement and more moisture. Okay, so like Darren was talking about earlier and he said, hey, it makes a lot of difference with your plant type and all these types of things. If you can get more sunlight down, you have less problem. Just think about what are the best conditions for mushrooms to grow? Well, it's when you've got that tight canopy, there's a lot of humidity, you're not getting sunlight down there. So if we have hot conditions and sunny conditions, then we don't typically have a problem with sclerotinia white mold. That's why this is much more of a problem in the northern United States and up into Canada as opposed to down south. So if you've had white mold in your fields or in area fields around you, what can you do to protect your fields? One correlation that we've seen that's been documented with a nutrient is manganese. If we're low in manganese availability, we end up typically with more white mold. If we've got really good, strong manganese availability, we often see less white mold. So that's something you could start building up uh, going into next spring, whether that's putting some chelated manganese out relatively close to where you're planting the seed, or if you get something done over the winter here, if you had the right conditions, clearly you can't if you've got snow. Well, you could also do manganese foliar. But the other thing with manganese in the soil is it's much more available as the soil pH goes down. So if you've got an 8 pH, you're, you're going to be more prone to have white mold. If you can push that pH down, usually by improving drainage and adding elemental sulfur, you push that pH down, now you're going to have better manganese availability, you should have a little bit less white mold. One other thing you can do in terms of a soil amendment is you could put out a natural fungus to try and fight against this sclerotinia. There's a product called Contans that contains a natural fungus that feeds on the sclerotia. So by putting it out, hopefully in advance of planting soybeans or even the fall after soybeans in a two-year crop rotation, to give that fungus more time to work, you can reduce the number of sclerotia and reduce the white mold pressure. There's been a lot of work done on this product over the last few years in the upper Midwest. 
with pretty promising results. Now one thing I would caution you on, this product needs to be frozen or kept very cool. So it's a little different than other products you handle, but if you handle it right, it's going to do a nice job for you in the field. Well, kept frozen for storage, not for use, obviously. Uh, then we talk about Cobra, use a low rate, maybe a half rate. Before flowering, you can do that in soybeans. For all crops, you better look at fungicide. I would be spraying as soon as I possibly can, so we're talking about right at R1 in soybeans and a number of other crops. Endura is the best product. Perline is a little step down. Then you go down to products like Topson and Domark that are okay, but as cheap as they are now, you could actually tank mix those and get pretty decent results. Brian mentioned R1, that's first flower in soybeans. So as soon as you're flowering, you've got to protect it with a fungicide every week to two weeks all the way through the season. And many times we'll see white mold pop up late in the season and farmers have only sprayed one shot of well, fungicide or maybe yeah, two. Yeah, but hold on there, not every week or two weeks. We're gonna say every two to three weeks is when you would want to reapply. Fungicides, we can get at least a couple weeks worth of residual out of them. To think we can stretch it to three weeks, it's possible. No, Brian, here's the challenge though, is each flower that comes out, the petals need to be protected. Well, soybeans are in bloom, really from R1 to about R5.5, they're putting out new blooms. So every new bloom that comes out is unprotected if it doesn't get hit with a fungicide. Well, so not necessarily. how long do you wanna wait? Not necessarily. So what we're looking at here is the new leaves and new stem. So that is unprotected, yes, I'll give you that. Either way, white mold is a serious problem in soybeans. It's really tough to stop. So you've got to plan ahead. Oftentimes we're planting a lower population with a variety with known tolerance to sclerotinia white mold. And then we're treating it by putting contans out in the soil, making sure we've got good levels of manganese throughout the season and using cobra and foliar fungicides to slow it down in season. Yeah, and again, cobra is only with soybeans, not with some of the other crops. And I'd say too, variety selection is the number one thing that I'm looking for. Got to have a great variety do that. To think that we're going to cut planting population way down and we're going to have dramatic impact, we have not seen that on our farm. We'll be able to slightly reduce the white mold, but it is absolutely not going to solve the problem if you cut the planting population. And now we've also taken more risk for having more weeds in there and other problems. So be careful about cutting planting population and thinking that's your, your number one solution. It's not. One other issue that we can sometimes see in soybeans is our weed of the week. Can you identify this week's weed?